Welcome to our presentation today, Intelligent Customer Service, Delivering Amazing Customer Experiences. My name is Deb Victor, and today we'd like to address the challenges of customer service organizations and provide a demonstration of the Microsoft Intelligent Customer Engagement Platform. So the challenge for customer service organizations is to support every customer with a personalized and contextual interaction from self to assisted to on-site service on any device while achieving their business goals. Customer service organizations are now at the epicenter of their company's ability to differentiate their brand and drive customer loyalty and advocacy. We believe that by delivering intelligent customer service, you can truly transform the customer experience and we are really excited to share our vision for service organizations with you here today. So there are a couple important points to consider here. Customer expectations continue to rise and service preferences have changed. The phone has been replaced as the number one channel with 76% of today's customers using self-service to resolve their product and service issues. While successful self-service outcomes increase CSAT scores and decrease call center volumes, there is another important outcome to consider. The issues that do require assisted service are increasingly more complex. As a result, the role of customer service agent has become more complex as well. The numbers are clear. A 12% decline in first call resolution since 2009 and a relentlessly high average annual agent turnover rate. So it's important to provide every agent with the tools they need to be successful not only to increase first contact resolution, but to increase job satisfaction and reduce turnover. At the same time, it is more important than ever to reduce onboarding times and provide the types of tools that will make new agents as successful as tenured agents. And with 73% of customers saying that valuing their time is the most important element of good service, by introducing on-site service delivery, we're allowing organizations to extend that efficiency beyond the agent. To deliver amazing experiences requires an understanding of our customer's perspective so you can earn their loyalty, an environment that positions agents to have successful interactions and gives your business the tools to spot trends and respond instantly. So Contoso is a B2C home services company based in Seattle. They have over 12,000 employees with $12 billion in an annual revenue. Today, we want to demonstrate how Contoso is leveraging the Microsoft Intelligent Customer Engagement Platform to deliver amazing customer experiences. We'll show how Contoso is creating a seamless cross-channel customer, agent, and field tech experience. How they're monetizing data by providing proactive and preemptive service and predictive upsell and cross-sell opportunities. How they're operationalizing reporting to identify trends, risks, and areas for improvement. And then lastly, how they're leveraging bots in service automation. So let's go ahead and introduce you to our actors and our story today. So it starts with Deb Smith. She's Contoso's customer. She's a busy corporate professional, wife and mother of five, and has her in-laws living with her too. She just simply doesn't have a whole lot of time to shop around for deals and just needs things in her home to be up and running all the time. Things like her kitchen equipment so meals can be prepared for her large family, her family's computers, printers, and network, especially since her husband works from home quite a bit. And lastly, her home theater that um, they put in last year because this brings the family together every Friday night. Uh, so the story starts here with Deb receiving an alert that her home router is not functioning properly. The devices within the home are no longer connected. She has provided some self-service options to try and resolve the issue on her own. Uh, when she isn't able to resolve on her own, she escalates to assisted service within Contoso's command center. And this is where she's introduced to Jeff. Jeff, who is the Contoso command center agent extraordinaire, he manages incoming alerts from sensors on customers' equipment in their homes. And he receives a chat request from Deb, diagnoses the situation, leverages authoritative knowledge, and when it's identified that the situation can't be resolved via assisted service, Jeff dispatches a technician for on-site service. This is when we're introduced to Andy. He's our field uh, service technician. And he's the one who gets scheduled for the job. And he not only provides great customer experiences by fixing the customer's equipment promptly to minimize any downtime, 
but he also provides intelligent suggestions for um, value-added products and services to his customer, deepening their customer loyalty. Then we'll move in over to Deborah. She's a call center manager, and she needs to be able to monitor the business, identify risks, and put strategies in place to mitigate those risks. And then lastly, we're going to transition back to Jeff as our agent to take a look at how we, um, Contoso's leveraging bots to scale their service uh, in a very efficient and effective manner. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to transition over to Deb, our customer, played by Jeff. I'm Jeff Innes, and I'm going to be taking on the role of Deb, our customer. And we're going to see in this scenario how I am able to get access to authoritative self-service knowledge, potentially diagnose my issue on my own, and then how I'm also able to engage with Contoso across channels for assisted service as well. So to kick off our scenario, I've received a notification via email that uh, Contoso has detected an issue with my home router. And sure enough, I check on my laptop and I'm not able to get access to the internet. And so what I do is I turn on my tablet. I also turn on my 4G LTE data plan, so I'll be able to get access to the internet from that device. And I go to my Contoso portal, which gives me insight into uh, the status of all of the connected devices that I have under my service plan with Contoso. It also gives me access to authoritative self-service knowledge and allows me to engage with Contoso across channels. So uh, as I check out uh, the status of my devices, I can confirm that sure enough, my Netgear router is experiencing a failure. What I do is I click on that failure notification and I am prompted uh, to walk through a diagnostic troubleshooter here that's going to help me potentially resolve this issue on my own. And so I'm prompted with a series of questions, such as, am I able to access search sites such as Bing or Google? And the answer is no. Am I able to access my email? No, I'm not able to access that either. Well, have you tried to restart your router? I haven't tried that yet. And so now I am given um, an interactive rich media content video that's going to guide me step by step through how I can properly restart my Netgear router to potentially resolve this issue on my own. So in many instances, I would be able to um, follow this diagnostic process and resolve this issue on my own without having to escalate to engage with a Contoso agent. That's a great win-win scenario because I don't have to wait for some support from Contoso. I'm able to resolve my issue on my own. And it's also great for Contoso because when we deflect it in this way, we're able to reduce inbound contacts that would be higher cost if they came through on the email channel or as a phone call, for example. But let's uh, go back to the start of our uh, troubleshooter here. And we're going to see what happens if I'm not able to resolve it through this diagnostic process here. In that instance, I'm not able to access search sites such as Bing or Google. Um, I'm not able to access my email, and I did attempt to restart my router, but unfortunately it didn't have the desired effect. So at this point, I'm prompted to engage for assisted service with a Contoso agent, and I elect to do that on the chat channel. So when I click our button, I'm able to engage in a live chat with Contoso. Before I uh, engage, I'm prompted to confirm uh, the specific issue that I wish to chat about, and I'm going to confirm that it is the issue with my router. And when I submit this request to chat, what's going to happen is we're going to use skills-based routing to route this chat to an agent on the Contoso side who is going to have uh, the ability to resolve this issue in a timely and effective manner. Okay, before we do that, let's transition over to our agent's view. And we're going to take a look at the consolidated agent desktop that Microsoft Solution offers uh, so that Contoso agents are able to manage contact across channels from a consolidated single pane of glass empowered by a guided process and authoritative knowledge. OK, so at this point, our customer, Deb, is going to submit the request for a chat. That's going to get routed 
to Jeff, our uh, agent on the Contoso side. When uh, Jeff is engaged, he's going to receive a notification that there's an incoming chat from Deb, and he's going to be able to use that, click on that notification, and engage in a session with Deb on the chat panel. So as Jeff, uh, I'm going to go ahead and accept that chat, and we're going to see how I am empowered through a guided process to help resolve this issue for Deb on the chat panel. Okay, so I'm now engaged in my chat with Deb. And looking at our agent desktop, we can see that in our main panel in the center of the screen, we've got the actual ongoing chat dialogue with Deb. Uh, but a little bit further over um, on the left hand side here, you can see I've got Deb's core contact information, email address, her telephone number. I, those were per, will persist throughout my uh, engagement session with Deb. If we get disconnected, um, I can just simply reach out to her via email or via the phone channel. And a little bit further down, you can see we've got our agent script here. This is going to guide me step by step through the process that I need to follow to ensure consistent and quality resolutions for our customers here. Okay, so the first thing that's going to happen here is Deb, our customer, is going to give us a little bit of a confirmation of the nature of the issue. And she's going to uh, provide a little bit of detail here. Say, it appears my router is failing. So Deb's going to go ahead and submit that. Jeff receives that notification. And uh, one of the other things I'm going to call out here is the fact that when that chat message is received, in real time, we're able to leverage the power of Microsoft's artificial intelligence here to automatically determine the sentiment that's being expressed by Deb here and present that. Um, that gives a notification for our agent. Jeff is informed of the sentiment being expressed, but we're also able to track that on an ongoing basis so we can understand the sentiment that's being expressed um, on particular Contoso product lines, sentiment um, associated with a particular agent on an ongoing basis, and even use that sentiment within the course of, uh, let's say, an ongoing chat or a call to auto-escalate. We've got ongoing negative sentiment taking place throughout the course of this conversation. OK, so as Jeff, I've received confirmation um, that it, uh, there's a router issue that Deb is engaging with us on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leverage the step-by-step -step guidance that I've got to help me gather the information I need to be able to resolve this issue for Deb. The first thing that I'm going to do is view Deb's customer profile here. So just with that one click, we've got full access to a 360-degree view of Deb Smith. We've got information about her account details. We've got information about her preferences. All of the activities that we've engaged with Deb um, on across channels, whether they be co-browse sessions, chats, um, engagements that she's had with our bot, those will all be tracked within our middle panel here. And we've also got access to the various different assets that Deb has covered under her support plan with Contoso and any recent service calls that she's had with Contoso as well. So we've got that full 360 view that we can use to provide a personalized engagement as we're helping Deb here. OK, so the next step in the process is I am going to verify Deb's details. As I'm doing this, you can see within our chat window on the right-hand side here, we're notifying Deb of the fact that we are pulling up her information and confirming her details there. So she's um, kept engaged within the conversation. And the next step is I am presented Jeff is presented with the existing open cases um, that um, are associated with Deb here. And I can see we've got three, one of which is um, a, an issue that was detected by our sensors related to her home router. And so she's confirmed that in the course of the, the chat that she wants to engage about the home, home router issue that's being de detected. So I can just simply click that particular issue and bring up the full details. So I've got that at my disposal, and I can use that in the course of resolving this for Deb. So we're now drilling into this sensor-detected home router issue. Looking at this particular, uh, the details here, all of the details of this case are available to me, including um, the nature of the case, the origin, the channel of origin that it came through on, 
the specific customer asset it relates to, and more. Any activities that occur in relation to this specific case will be available to me in our middle pane here. And I've also got access to SLA details. So uh, we've got uh, specific guidance in terms of when we need to, the duration of time that we need to provide our first response in and a resolution in. And I've got real-time details or counters that are displayed to me as an agent in terms of how long we've got to provide a first response and a resolution. Those are interactive and updating in real time there. Okay, so with, those, with, with that, I've got full perspective in terms of the nature of this issue, and I'm ready to progress in terms of helping to resolve this for Deb. So I'm going to follow my, my guidance and my steps as an agent. I'm going to confirm the case title and information. The next thing that I want to do is I want to bring in a little bit more perspective and take a look at Deb's customer dashboard. So with this, with one click, we're taking the context of the customer that I'm engaged with, and we're bringing up Deb's view of her dashboard there. So I can get the perspective of what she's seeing, um, all of the information that's displayed um, about her connected devices, and I can use this to help give me perspective and guidance that will help me resolve the issue for Deb. So I can confirm that we've got a, a full failure on that Netgear router there, and I can use that to make a determination in terms of how I want to proceed next. So what I want to do, based on what I've seen with uh, Deb's dashboard here, I determined that I want to transfer this from the chat panel. Um, we're going to transfer channels, and I want to engage with Deb via a telephone call. So I'm going to put on my headset here. And with one click, we're able to take the context of Deb, who we're engaged with, her phone number that's available to us and automatically um, create an outbound call for Deb so I'll be able to engage with her via voice. And you'll see as I do that, we're also giving her an automatic notification via the chat she's engaged in that we're going to be calling her on this specific number. So she's got that awareness. Okay, so at this point, I can engage with Deb on the voice channel. And one of the things that I might want to do is to bring up contextually relevant and authoritative knowledge that I can use to help guide me as an agent through this process here and diagnose the issue. And so with one click in my guidance, um, I'm able to take the context of the nature of this router issue and use that to search for authoritative knowledge that I, that I can leverage here in this call. And I've been able to identify knowledge related to internet router malfunction diagnosis that I can use while I'm on the call with Deb. So we've seen how I've been able to get access to authoritative knowledge by just simply clicking on my call script to bring across the context. But let's see how we can also access authoritative knowledge based purely on the conversation that's taking place with our customer. So let's say I'm engaged in our conversation with Deb, and I might say something such as this. I'd be happy to help you with your router issue. OK, so you saw what happened there. As I spoke, my speech was transcribed in real time. We're capturing that transcript and persisting it throughout our session. We're also using what was captured to automatically surface relevant knowledge that our agent can use in the course of resolving issues with customers. And that was all done just purely based on the conversation that took place between me and the customer there. So it provides me with a natural and intuitive way as an agent of engaging with the application and accessing authoritative knowledge that I can use for the course of my customer engagement. You'll also see that as uh, I was speaking, my actual uh, transcribed uh, text uh, of my speech was used to detect the sentiment of what I was expressing to our customers um, in real time as well. And that can also be used to track the sentiment being expressed both by customers as well as by agents in the course of their voice-based conversations as well. So I'm leveraging this uh, information, and I'm guiding uh, Deb step-by-step step through a series of uh, diagnostic processes and in the course of discussing this with Deb and going through the steps, we identify that it would be optimal for us to be able to take a look at what 
Deb sees when she goes to her um, router configuration page within her browser. So I prompt Deb to navigate to her router configuration page within her browser. And we can take a look at, at that together through a co-browse session. So we're now going to transition over to our customer's view. And we're going to take a look at Deb and how she's able to bring up her Cobra, um, bring up her Netgear router configuration page within her browser. So Jeff asks Deb to click on the button in the bottom left-hand corner that will allow her to engage in a screen sharing session there. So Deb goes ahead and does that. And when she does that, she's given a code. And that code can be dictated to Jeff over, over the call. That's going to allow Jeff to then engage in a real-time co-browsing session. So Jeff is capturing the code from Deb and entering it into uh, his agent desktop. Jeff is able to verify the code. And Jeff's now able to engage in a session and join that session with Deb. So we're now going to transition over to our agent view and see how Jeff, the agent, is able to see within his consolidated desktop He's able to participate in a co-browse session. And Jeff's going to expand the screen there so that we can have a little bit more um, of a full view. And you'll see that what I'm able to do is I am able to navigate my mouse, highlight particular things within the browser. That will be seen by our customer, Deb, on her end. As Deb navigates her mouse, you'll see that Jeff is able to see where she's pointing her mouse as well. And Jeff is also able to use annotations and, for example, highlight a particular area within the uh, browser diagnostic and configuration page that will persist um, on Deb's end. And so Jeff can use that to highlight particular areas that Deb should focus on and use this to work interactively in real time to help resolve the issue. In this instance, based on what Deb and Jeff see in the course of that screen sharing session, um, it's determined, Jeff's able to determine that what we're really going to need to do, because it does look like there's a, a hardware issue, we're going to need to actually dispatch one of our Contoso field technicians on site to um, do some further on site diagnostics, potentially do a repair or a replacement there. And so, what uh, Jeff is going to do is he's going to come back to the actual case at hand, and with one more click, Jeff is able to basically create a work order taking into account all of the details of this particular issue, including the specific asset, the router that's being impacted. Uh, that uh, work order is able to take into account all of the um, inventory that a field technician would need to bring uh, to be able to diagnose and resolve this issue on site for Deb. Okay, so. Jeff's been able to create this work order, and he's also able to um, use our schedule assistant here while he's engaged on this call with Deb to identify a time that would be agreeable for Deb for on-site service, and also identify a resource who will have the necessary skills and availability to be able to provide that. Okay, so Jeff's going to expand the screen a little bit. And he's able to search, um, specifying uh, specific criteria in terms of the time frames that he wants to identify resources for. We can include specific skills that will be needed from technicians. And then we're able to do a search for available technicians who will be able to uh, come on site for Deb. So we're taking into account the specific location of where Deb lives, as well as the location of where our field tech who have those capabilities, where they are as well. And so with my search, I'm able to identify that we've got Andy available today. So I'm able to select Andy and specify a particular time. Um, and I can um, arrange this in my call with Deb. And I'm going to arrange for our technician to um, arrive um, a little bit after 2 o'clock. So at this point, I can go ahead and schedule that. When I do, that is actually going to assign this work order to our field technician, Andy. Andy's going to receive a real-time notification that he's had a work order assigned to him. 
And you'll see that I've switched over to our, um, our schedule board. And in a moment, we're going to see how that work order that has been assigned to Andy is going to show up on his schedule for the day and how Andy is actually going to receive a telephone call notifying him of this uh, customer visit that he's going to have to make a little bit later on in the day here. OK, so we've seen that our work order that we've assigned to Andy has now been placed on his schedule, on the schedule board for today. And um, in a moment, Andy's also going to receive a notification via the telephone informing him that he's going to have to go on site and engage uh, to resolve this router issue for Deb. This is the Contoso dispatcher. You have been assigned a new work order. This work order is for one of our most important customers. So please make sure to deliver an amazing customer experience. And don't tell me you didn't get notified about this job. Thank you. Goodbye. OK, so with that, we heard uh, the phone notification that uh, Andy, our field technician, received. And we're, in a moment, going to transition over and take a look at how Microsoft Solution powers field technicians to provide amazing experiences for customers on site. But before we do that, let's just recap what we saw in our first couple of scenarios there. We saw how Deb, our customer, was able to get access to self-service and go through a diagnostic process to potentially resolve her issue on her own. We also saw how Deb was able to engage for assisted service across channels with uh, Contoso's agents. We saw how Contoso's agents were empowered with a consolidated agent desktop that enabled them to engage across channels from a consolidated single pane of glass, and how those agents are uh, provided with guidance and authoritative knowledge to help them drive towards consistent, high-quality resolutions and amazing experiences for our customers. So with that, we're now going to transition over and see how Andy is able to provide amazing service on site. Thanks, Jeff. We are now transitioning from our assisted service to on-site service. My name is Andy Grilk, and I'll be the field service technician out in the field performing the service for our customer, Deb. As you heard a few moments ago, I received a notification on my phone of a new job added to my schedule. And I could have received this from a text message, or as you heard, a phone call or an email. I'm going to go over into my field service mobile app here, and let's go take a look at our schedules. And there's the one that was just assigned to me. Today I'm showing this on an iPad mini. Uh, we could also have chosen to show this on any of the Windows devices, the Surface, the Windows phones, or the Android tablets or phones. And you'd have the same exact experience that you're seeing here. So it's supported by all platforms within that offline and online capacity. So let's go take a look at the details of this job. We can see I'm supposed to be showing up at 2 PM today. OK, I can see I have a map here of the actual job location, which I can then use to get my point-to-point -point driving directions. I scroll down. I can see I'm doing an on-site network diagnostic. That's the uh, issue. It looks like she's having a problem with her Netgear wireless router. Let's just go take a quick look here at the details of that router. And we can see we have all of the serial number, model number, past work orders, or jobs that we had to go out perform an issue with this particular device. I've even included on here the router manual so that we can go in and be able to take a look at specifics for this particular model, things like the admin password if we need to reset it and reconfigure it for Deb while we're on site. Looks like I have all the tools I need. So let me come back here to the job. And I'm going to mark that I am now confirming this appointment with Deb. OK, and you'll see in a couple of seconds here, it's going to actually push that data back up to the dispatcher, as well as the data center, and this will allow the dispatcher and the customer to be able to be notified 
that I have now accepted the job. So if we look at our schedule board that the dispatcher would be referring to, we can see that that job that's been assigned to me has now changed color to blue because I've now confirmed that I will be accepting this job and be there at the scheduled time to fix Deb's router problem. Okay, so let's go back into our mobile. And let's fast forward to me actually arriving on the job site to perform the service. So again, we will change our our status to I am now on site. And let's go in and start working on our actual job. So again, in looking at this, you'll notice I have a list of tasks already set up here that I need to perform in order to make sure the job is done correctly. So I want to check the power to that router. I want to check the physical layer, validate settings on the router. So I've got step-by-step -step tasks here to guide me through that diagnostic to make sure that I'm doing it just as any other tech from Contosa would be doing it as well. I have here my list of products that might need to be replaced in order to solve this problem. You can see in this case I've got uh, maybe need to change the power adapter or maybe change some of the cabling. I also am presented with some suggestions. These suggestions are given to me by things such as Deb's purchase history or her profile, uh, messages we receive from maybe equipment in her home through IoT to our IoT service hub, even machine learning. So we can look at customers like Deb, and as we look at the cus other customers, we can see what their trends and things are of, of other ways that we can help Deb while we're out there on the site. This allows us to be able to monetize that data and predict those upsell items to the customer. So let's start here by first taking care of her problem. We found that it's a bad power adapter. I'm going to go in and change our power adapter from estimated to used that we have replaced one of these for Deb. Next, I'm going to talk to Deb about her HP printer because, again, through our IoT messaging, we've found that her ink levels are low, so we brought a couple of cartridges with us to say, hey, you know, Deb, while we're here, we noticed your ink was low on the printer. Would you like me to change those printer cartridges while I'm here? Deb loves that idea, and we're going to, matter of fact, we're not just going to change the one that's empty, but we're going to leave her an extra one so that she has one for a backup. So we're going to use that quantity of two. Okay, third, I'm going to suggest to Deb that we have a comprehensive home service plan. And today, you know, this service that I had to come out and fix her router might have been covered under that plan, as well as other devices and appliances in her home. So we want to make sure that, you know, we're trying to provide the best ultimate service for her. We'll want to suggest that to Deb. She loves that idea and would love to save some money and time. So we're going to come over and we're going to just mark here a little follow-up on this job so that one of our people can follow back up with her in regards to pricing and information on this. So instead of typing on the keyboard, I'm actually going to do our speech to text. Please follow up on comprehensive home service plan. All right, fantastic. Okay, so just as a couple of other things we can do in here as well, I'm going to scroll down to our notes section. Now, certainly I can take notes, you know, either with my fingers or in the voice to text, but I can also capture different types of information here, such as pictures, uh, audio, or even video. So if I wanted to maybe take a video of, you know, what it is I had to fix or change on that router or... Uh, maybe it was wiring that I, you know, one of her uh, pets gnawed through, and I sit, can show her the picture of the cable all gnawed through, and then in a picture after I replaced it, you have the ability to take as many pictures as you like and attach them right into this work order as well. Okay, let's come back. Of course, you saw that being that I have access to her equipment that's already on site, 
if she had additional equipment that maybe we want to include in that service plan, I could also capture those details and add that right in here as well for Debs so that will help our agent when she's pricing out that service plan for her that she's following up on. So last but not least, let me come down here and we want to capture our signature from Deb that we did a great job today in solving her issue. Okay, and we'll save all that off as our job is done. So not only was I able to solve Deb's problem today in regards to her router, but I was also to be able to give her some value-added service by replacing her ink cartridges that were low and suggesting to her that comprehensive home service plan. So now Deb has in a renewed respect and, and trust in Contoso because now we've proven to her that we not only know her and her needs, but we're able to do that through our personalized, proactive, and predictive service. Okay, so we're transitioning now to Deborah. She's a call center manager, and as a call center manager, I need to be able to monitor the business, uh, identify risks, put strategies in place to mitigate those risks, and I do that through gamification and my customer service manager dashboard. So let's go ahead and get started. Starting here with gamification, uh, we've really been driving results and changing the culture here at Contoso through uh, gamification. We've seen an increase in collaboration, an increase in customer SAT scores, even an increase in revenue. Uh, so we use um, both individual and team-based goals. In our team-based goals, we have managers actually drafting team members into various teams, similar to a fantasy football league. And uh, with those team-based um, games, we've really seen um, you know, top performers relying on lower performers and vice versa in driving collaboration and servicing our customers. And within the games, you can really um, monitor or add metrics and points to anything that an um, employee is responsible for. It might be... Uh, closed um, calls with a certain satisfaction uh, in terms of resolution. It might be customer visits that are completed, um, closed sales, those types of things. And we use prizes here to incent folks uh, within the games. And then we also make these uh, leaderboards that you see here on the screen visible on uh, TVs within the call centers and within the dashboards of the business applications that users are using today. So the other view I need of my business is my all-up view um, of the call center and the key performance indicators. Um, this helps me um, identify any outliers or anomalies within the business and be able to take action. And this customer service dashboard provides an aggregate view for many different uh, data sources within the organization. It also gives me the ability to um, drill down, filter the data, and pivot the data um, when necessary. So here on my cases by priority uh, view here on my dashboard, if I want to focus in on um, cases by priority, I can go ahead, touch in, it'll drill down into the underlying report that supports that um, visualization. And so now here in the upper right hand corner, if I do want to just focus in on high priority cases, I can simply touch into the high priority cases in the upper right. And the rest of the various components on this canvas now filter just focusing in on high priority cases. So now I can see high priority by origin, by satisfaction, and so forth. I can see that all of our high priority cases are being resolved uh, to a satisfied level. Um, but I also notice that none of them are being resolved to a very satisfied level. So that's something I definitely will be looking into. Now, if there's something that doesn't appear on my dashboard that I'm interested in, I can simply use my own natural language to query the data and ask a question. So we'll look for total uh, cases by subject. And the tool then presents back the answer in the most logical format. Um, I can extend this maybe to look at by satisfaction. And it gives back the new uh, answer or view of that data. And if I don't like that particular format, I can say on a stat bar. 
You can actually query all of this using your voice commands as well. Um, I'm using text here today. Now, if this is something that I want to go back to on a reoccurring basis on my dashboard, I can go ahead and in the upper right hand corner, you'll see pin visual. I can go ahead and pin that visual onto my dashboard. And then going back to that dashboard, you'll see it displayed here where I can now then drag and drop that up to any uh, part of the dashboard that I wish. So as you can see, as a or call center manager, I have the visualizations and the insight that I need to be able to monitor the business, identify risks, and um, put strategies in place to mitigate those risks. So now we're going to go ahead and transition back over to Jeff, our call center agent, uh, to take a look at how we can leverage bots to scale our service operations. All right. For this scenario, we're going to take a look at how Contoso can scale out its customer service and provide intuitive and natural experiences for its customers on the social channels that they're already having conversations on through the power of bots or conversational agents. So I am going to take on the role of our customer again and I've got my mobile device with me and we're going to go back to our original scenario where I've got an issue with my router. We're going to see how I can engage with Contoso um, on Skype my personal preferred social channel for chat, and how I can get access to self-service and even assisted service all through um, a bot that's available on Skype. So I've got my mobile device. I am going to launch Skype. When I've got Skype up, I'm able to navigate to my bot contacts, one of which is the Contoso bot. So when I engage with the Contoso bot, I can um, just simply type in a conversational way and say something such as, I need help with a router reset. Okay, so when I type that, our Contoso bot is going to be able to leverage the power of machine-based AI to identify the intent of what it is that I'm looking for. In this instance, it's assistance with a particular issue with my router. And our bot is able to deduce that intent, then seek out authoritative knowledge from our consolidated knowledge repository and then provide me with step-by-step -step guidance in terms of how I can perform a router reset. See, I've got my, my steps. We can also embed rich media content in the form of our walkthrough video that I can follow from the bot experience as well. So in many instances, I'm able to uh, resolve this issue through the uh, info information and the authoritative knowledge that the bot is able to provide for me here. So with that, I've been able to walk through these steps, reset my router, and I'm good to go with my internet connection. So um, I do have another issue that I want to engage with on though. So I don't want to do um, a search for any more knowledge, but I do want some help with something else. So I'm going to engage with the bot, tell the bot that I do wish to get some help with something else. And what I need to do is to submit an issue because I've got a problem with one of the appliances that I've purchased from Contoso. When I elect to submit an issue, our Contoso bot is going to gather all of the necessary information required to log an issue and schedule some field service here. And so I'm prompted by the bot to just simply provide a little bit of detail about the uh, issue at hand. So I've got a problem with an appliance. Okay. So when I submit that, the Contoso bot is going to prompt me uh, to specify which of the Contoso covered products this refers to. And so in this instance, the problem with my fridge, it's got some temperature issues. So I can just simply click the fridge. The bot is going to ask me about the nature of the uh, urgency of the issue. For me, this is a high urgency issue. The bot's going to prompt me for any additional details I can provide. And I, I can uh, inform the bot that uh, the fridge, it just won't get cold enough. Okay. So at this point, the bot's going to ask me what my preferred date and time for service is. So I want to get this taken care of promptly. So I'm going to say tomorrow at 9 a.m. At this point, the bot has gathered all the necessary information to log our issue and prepare to schedule a field technician. But the bot is going to confirm the details with me that I've got an issue with the uh, 
Samsung French door fridge, and I've got a desired service date of tomorrow at 9 a.m. I can go ahead and confirm that. And when I do that, our bot is connected to our consolidated customer engagement platform. And it is going to log our request for field service. You can see I've been given my confirmation number here, and I'm prompted as to whether I want assistance with anything else. And so there is one more thing that I want to get some assistance with. And that is, I want to check the status of another uh, issue that I had engaged with the Contoso bot for earlier. So I want to track one of the previously submitted cases here. So when I do, uh, I'm prompted as to whether I want to see my most recent case or a list of recent cases. I want to see a list of the recent cases here. And so I can see not only the case that I just submitted via our bot experience here, but I can also see some others. And I want to see the status of my request to send a replacement washer tray. When I select that, our bot is able to pull the real-time status of that particular issue, present it to me, confirm that the problem has been resolved, and the uh, replacement washer tray has been dispatched to me there. So what I've been able to do here is to get access to self-service knowledge, resolve my issue through my natural and intuitive interaction with the bot. I've also been able to request field service, and also uh, get updates on the status of existing issues here. And this is all powered by machine-based AI. So we're providing a natural experience for our customer, but we're also empowering Contoso to scale out operations because uh, this bot is powered by machine-based AI. We don't have to scale up with actual agents behind the scenes there. So it's a great way to provide service at scale there. And it's also a great way to engage with Contoso's customers because while I chose to engage with the bot on Skype, my preferred channel, we're also able to provide the same natural and intuitive experience across channels, whether it be on Facebook Messenger, email, SMS, Slack, and a wide variety of other channels that Contoso's customers are already using today. All right, so with that, I'm going to pass it back to Deb for our wrap-up. Okay, let's review what we showed you today. You saw how Contoso provides their customer a seamless cross-channel experience from self-service to chat to voice and to co-browse. We also showed how bots can be leveraged as another channel for customers while, while scaling service productivity. You saw an enterprise class unified desktop empowered with authoritative knowledge and cognitive services as well as a robust field technician mobile experience. You also saw how Contoso monetizes data by receiving messages from devices in the home and provide customer alerts and proactive uh, self-service. You also saw how Contoso can learn from all of their data and provide next best actions and offers, increasing their value in their customer relationships. And lastly, you saw how supervisors and managers have the insights needed to run the business smoothly. So the end result is decreased costs, increased revenue, and a unique competitive advantage in the marketplace for Contoso. This is a Microsoft Intelligent Customer Engagement Platform and our partner ecosystem in action, all real and possible now. So thank you for your time and attention.